flowers of two different plants they will involve in pollination so what is that here it is xenogamy you need to study antigen antibody interaction for that which tool do you use so that tool is nothing but elisa test polyploidy occurs either due to the addition of a chromosome or due to the deletion of a chromosome what is the function of the filiform apparatus its function is to guide the pollen tube entry there are two types of conservation one is in situ conservation and the other one is ex situ conservation Hello everyone a warm welcome to today's session on discussion about the model question paper I'm Dr Divya biology faculty Vidyashram Pre University College Mysore Temple of Excellence so this particular session that we are dealing with today we we'll learn about the model question paper because we all know that the model question paper that was given in the previous years was different of course the pattern was same but the only thing is some extra questions have been added here for your benefit so it is quite easy for you to score good marks and not just that even for passing also it is very easy because there are a lot of options here so what i've done here is i've split the sessions into two sessions wherein in today's session we'll discuss about the part a and part b of the model question paper and in the next session that is session 2 we shall discuss about the part c and the part d so moving on directly to the model question paper here is a glimpse of how exactly the final exam question paper looks like so they'll give you the general instructions so please read the general instructions carefully which most of them neglect and directly go into reading the questions and then writing the answers why general instructions are important here because you will know what exactly has to be written say for example here they have given a clear idea of what are the different parts in the question paper so like previous years question paper itself here also it is divided into four parts that is part a part b c and part d talking about part d the part d is again divided into two sections that is section 1 and section 2 so both of these section that is section 1 and section 2 they carry five marks but only thing is the number of questions there varies and next all the parts are compulsory so you cannot skip a part if you want to score well you will not skip a part but if you just think about passing then you may skip a part but all the parts here are compulsory at least you write two two points for each question it will fetch you at least one work mark and even those one one mark is also very important for scoring here so that is why even if you don't know the answer at least try to attempt all the parts as all the parts are compulsory in this particular case next talking about the instruction 3 here drawing diagrams of course this is a biology subject you need to draw the diagram because diagrammatic representation is everything in biology so whether they ask for a diagrammatic representation or sometimes they'll not directly ask you to draw a diagram but they may give you a question wherein they will say describe about an anther so when they say describe about an anther maybe the question will be the answer that you write for that the content will be only for 3 marks so is it enough you write only sentences that is about 250 words which is enough for 3 marks and then you do uh, leave it like that no it's not enough right so that is the time when you have to use your brains and you have to put your extra effort wherein you need to draw the diagram in spite of them not asking for it of course answer is easy so if it is easy please draw the diagram for your own benefit so that the marks can be given properly and not just drawing the diagram is important if you draw the diagram and if you don't label it properly then it will not fetch you any mark so that is what they have mentioned here unlabeled diagrams or illustrations do not attract any marks you draw a diagram very beautifully it's very pretty but if you don't label it then it's considered a zero so if it is a 5 mark question at least minimum of 8 labeling should be done if it is a 3 mark question at least a 6 labeling has to be done this thing you should keep in mind always and when you draw the diagram always please prefer that you draw the diagrams that are there from the ncert textbook of biology 
and nowhere else because that is why they have made a textbook right earlier there were no textbooks we could have referred any pu books that were available but now they have made like how for your high school and your primary classes you have textbooks like that they have made textbooks for puc why would have they done that so that everywhere the same standard will be followed uniformity will be there so that is why draw diagrams only from the ncert textbook don't draw from others it will not attract marks so that is the reason okay moving on to the question paper actual part that is part a of the question paper so part a of the question paper earlier there were only 10 questions that was asked and out of the 10 you had to answer all the 10 but now they have made it easier they have asked 15 questions out of the 15 you need to answer any 10 always have the habit of reading the question paper properly which most of you do not have nowadays because you even don't have the habit of reading books so that is the reason always have the habit of reading the question paper properly so here what they have asked answer any 10 out of the 15 questions that they have given right so it need not be you need to write two to three sentences. Why? It's because it is just a one mark question. You need to write only either wherever applicable, just write it in a word or write it in a sentence. That will fetch you one mark. So here also be very, very careful. Read the questions twice, thrice if you don't understand. Don't blindly answer. Why you need to read them twice and thrice? I'll show you when we'll discuss about the solutions for these questions questions i'll tell you clearly how you need to write so this is about the part a so 15 questions out of that 10 questions you need to answer so these are the 15 questions that they have given here so next moving on to part b so part b they have mentioned here three to five sentences either you can write it in three to five sentences or wherever applicable if possible you can write it in the form of two points again here there is one more thing you should notice here also they have given extra now every part they have given extra five questions so five questions are extra which is actually easy for you to score so easy for you the difficult ones you can eliminate the easier ones are which are there you can write it so here also if you see they have given around um, one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so 10 questions are given under part B. So it is a two mark question. You need to write three to five sentences or two points. And out of these 10 questions, you need to write only five. Any five that is there, you can write. So this is how the part B section looks like. And here you have to be very careful. Don't think that two marks means they'll ask only two mark question. They can ask one mark question here as well. Say for example, in this particular question number 60, if you look into question number 16, you can find name the vegetative propagules in potato in water hyacinth. So if you name the vegetative propagules in potato, it carries one mark. Vegetative propagule in uh, water hyacinth that is icornia it carries one mark therefore it is equal to two mark so that is biology they can ask however they want they might have mentioned in the blueprint that only for two marks from that chapter questions will come of course for two marks they will ask but they will split it into one mark and one mark so along with depending on the blueprint it is always better to concentrate on reading all the question and answers even here also in question number 19 if you can see give one example for each if you write this you'll get one mark this one again one mark so therefore totally two marks here also give reason for the occurrence of so can you see here here also one mark here one mark that is how you need to write that is why you need to read the question paper very very carefully next moving on to part c so part c it consists of three mark questions so here also five extra questions are there out of that you need to answer 5. So here also I think 10 are given. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we have 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, 10 are given. So out of the 10 questions you need to answer any 5. So how many words you are supposed to write? This is just a small estimate that they give that you need to write 40 to 80 words. It doesn't mean that you need to sit and count whether you have written 40 words or 80 words. If you write it point wise, say for example this is 3 marks write three points four points it will fetch you 
three marks. Not necessary that 40 to 80 words should be sat and count in the exam hall. No, that is not what they mean. So, this is about the three marks question. So, in three marks also, if you can see, here also they have asked here. They have split it. Say, for example, in question number 30, if you have a low, they have given mention the role of promoter, mention the role of terminator and mention the role of cistron in a transcription unit. So, if you, all these are one mark question, what is the role of promoter? What is the role of cistron? All that is one mark question. So, if you answer this, you will get one mark. This one, one mark. This one, one mark. So, totally three marks. So, that is how they split and ask in biology. So, be very, very careful while studying for the exam. So, this is about it. And also in three marks, they can ask uh, usually differences, differentiate between heterogametes and homogametes, for example. So, such kind of question usually comes in three marks and two marks as well. So, this is about the three mark question not just that sometimes they can only there is a simple diagram say for example draw a, a diagram of the section of the microsporangia so microsporangia is an easy diagram so there that will be asked for three marks so diagram drawing also can be asked for three marks if they are very larger diagrams even not just diagrams even schematic representations can also be asked like we have schematic representation of uh, the plasmodium life cycle then there is the schematic representation of uh, spermatogenesis oogenesis so there also labeling is very very important you draw all those then you forget you write mitosis, meiosis, then you forget to write 2, n, n, all that. That is the diploid and the haploid numbers. You forget to mention the chromosome number. All that will lead to the deleting of marks from your paper. So that is why you need to be very, very careful. Be it a schematic representation or be it a diagram, labeling is very, very important. So please study the labeling as well. Next, moving on to part D. So, here part D, as I told you, it is divided into two sections, section 1 and section 2. In both the sections also, questions for 5 marks will be appearing here. So, first talking about section 1. Here in section 1, actually 8 questions are given. Out of the 8, you need to answer any 4, which is about 200 to 250 words here. Here also, if you write about 6 to 8 points, it is sufficient because it is a 5 mark question or... Uh, don't uh, write how uh, art students write his or her exam paper. They write in paragraphs, right? But I always prefer for biology students to write answers. Of course, not all the answers you can write in the form of points. Some of the answers might be in the form of a paragraph. That is fine. But wherever possible, please write in the form of points so that when you write in the form of points, the amount that you have to write will not, not be more. Because you write 6 to 7 points for 5 mark question, that will be sufficient. But imagine if you are writing at a stretch in the form of a paragraph, then you will need to put in too many number of words there. So that is why always be very, very intelligent about choosing how you can manage the time while writing. Because there will be too much to write in this particular case. So that is why. So talking about section 1. So if you observe here, this is a 5 mark question, right? So, you might be thinking 5 marks. Okay, in the blueprint, they have properly given from which which chapters 5 mark questions will come. So, you will choose only those chapters and you will study from that chapter only 5 marks. But what would they have done? If you see question number 36 here, you can see that they have divided it again here. They have divided it into 3 marks and 2 marks. So, they have given, explained the pollination in Vallisneria, explain the wall of the pollen grain. So, here if you write about uh, 3 points here, it will fetch you 3 marks. Here if you write 2 points, it will fetch you 2 marks. So, therefore, totally you will get 5 marks. So, that is how they split and give it. So, and uh, not just that, here in this particular 5 mark question, they usually ask diagrams. So, say for example, in question number 37, they have asked sketch and label the sectional view of human female reproductive system. I want all the students to study this diagram because this is one of the important questions that has been repeated in most of the question papers. That is the human female reproductive system or they can also ask the mammary gland. So, all that if you study it is a compulsory question that will come in the question paper for sure. So, that is why. 
So here sketch and label. So you when the question also they have mentioned here sketch and label. So you need to draw at least eight labeling. Eight is minimum. More than that it is better because you might have done a spelling mistake. You might have labeled it wrong. So they'll have an extra option which they can consider there. So that is the reason. That thing you need to keep in mind. So this is about section one of part D. Next moving on to section two. So section two also again here six questions will be given out of which three you need to answer. So here also say for example I told you it is five mark. Can you see question number 45 here? Name the following. They have given five questions. Each of the, these will carry one mark each. One mark, one mark. All of this will carry one mark. So how intelligent they are. So you might look into the blueprint and study from this chapter only the five mark question. But what they have done here, they have asked five different questions here, each carrying one mark. So totally give answers for all of these, then you will get five marks. So that is how any way the questions can be asked. They can split the questions and ask it. So, so earlier as far as I remember older question papers and all they usually used to split it as three marks and two marks usually. But here can you see here how they have changed this time the pattern. So that is why concentrate on studying the entire syllabus. That is I want you to study the entire chapter whichever chapter you are studying don't study it 50%. Study it entirely. Make sure that everything you will be covered there. Starting right from the one mark to that of the five mark. Because this is the reason why I want you to study everything. Because this kind of questions can be asked. So similarly here also name the type. So here also they have divided here. Yeah, in question number 48. Answer the following. List the advantages of predation of ecosystem. So what is the marks that they have given for this three mark, right? Three mark they have given. So when they have given three mark, how many advantages should you write? Three advantages is compulsory because each advantage will carry one mark there. So write three advantages here. Next you can see here they have split this question that is question number 2 under 48. They have split it into two questions. Here also it will carry one mark and it will carry one mark. So, sea anemone and clownfish, what is the interaction between them called as flower and pollinator species visiting it? What is the interaction? Here, if you write both, you will get two marks. So, that is how they can split it. Uh, same way in question number 50 also, they have asked the same thing like uh, advantages of using the compressed natural gas that is a CNG here. Three advantages you need to write which will fetch you three marks here. Joint forest management at least two to three points you write here it will fetch you two marks. So that is how they split and ask. So this is about the model question paper. So we will move on to discussing the answers here of these uh, questions so that you will get an idea how exactly you need to write. Don't write unnecessary things too much. As I told you five marks six to seven points. It will save your time. So don't write in the form of para too much. It is unnecessary actually. So that is why and it is easy for the people who correct your paper as well. And always I want you to understand this. Please underline the important words in your answers. Why is it? Why you should do that? Because sometimes what happens, not all of us are good in languages, right? Some of us are not good in English. So that is the time when the examiner might find it difficult to understand some of you by heart, some of you understand, then put it in your own words. So there are different kinds of students who are there. Some are very good in English. So those who are very good in English, if they don't by heart also, they can understand the answer and put it in their own words. There are some students who need to buy heart it because they don't know the language. So for such students, sometimes you forget the answer, but you'll know what exactly it is, but you'll not be able to express it or put it in the words, right? You'll not be able to frame a sentence. So that is the time where even though your sentence is wrong, at least mark about it. Mark the words there, important words. So that is what, so the examiner, whoever is correcting it, the invigilator, he will only see that word and he will realize that you know something, only problem with you is the language. So that time he or she will give you the mark. So that is why underlying the keywords or important words is very, very important here. And not just that, read the question paper very, very carefully. And 
Also, writing the question number is very, very important. Of course, in your second PUC, the paper will go to somebody else for correction. We ourselves will not know who the handling the paper, who is the one correcting your paper. So, your teachers will know you very well, what kind of student you are. So, they will understand you, but the other person who is correcting your paper will not know you, right? So, that is why they will not uh, say, okay, this poor boy by mistake or poor girl by mistake, she has or he has written the question number wrong. Let me give them mark. They will not have that patience. Why? Because at a day, they will have to correct too much amount of papers, many number of papers. So, they can't keep correcting the questions for you. So, you write, say for example, you write the question number as 50 and you write the answer for question number 49 and for, he'll just see, okay, question number 49. Oh, this person has written 49, but he has written answer for question number 50. He will not have the patience. He'll just read the answer. He'll say, 49, this is not the answer. It is wrong. So, that is why write the question numbers very, very carefully. Don't miss writing the question numbers. Again, that is the problem here because you have too many options. Sometimes what you might do is, you might just... Miss the question numbers, you might skip a question number, write some other question number there. So that is why be very, very careful in writing the question numbers very, very properly. So next, okay, moving on to the discussion about the answers, how you need to write the answers. So we'll talk about part A. As I told you, part A, it carries 15 questions out of which you need to answer any 10 of them. So 10 in 10 marks you will get from this particular section A. So, the first question that they have asked here is mention the unique reproductive behavior of Strobilanthus kuntiana. So, Strobilanthus kuntiana, one more local name for that is Neela Kurunji, right? So, it is a flower that actually flowers only once in 12 years. So, that is the actually the reproductive behavior. That is a peculiar character. Almost all the flowers throughout the year or every year or every month, they flower, they set the seeds, right? But what is the major feature in Strobilanthus kuntiana? They actually, they flower only once in 12 years. So, once in 12 years means 12 years they have to wait if they have to get into the next life cycle. So, that is one of the peculiar characteristic here. So, you have to mention about that in this particular question. Next again here, name the type of pollination that brings genetically different types of pollen to stigma. What it means? There are different types of pollination. There is gaitanogamy, xenogamy and all that we have studied, right? But here, what is the type of pollination that brings genetically different types of pollen to the stigma? Read the question very well. If they have to bring genetically different types of pollen to the stigma means the Self-pollination will not happen here, right? Cross-pollination will only occur. So, when cross-pollination is occurring here, that is the anthers will be brought from the plant A to plant B or from plant B to plant A, right? So, that is why flowers of two different plants, they will involve in pollination. So, what is that here? It is xenogamy. So, xenogamy that is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of a different plant. So, this is the only type of pollination which during pollination brings genetically different types of pollen grains. Here, for you to understand, I have written so much, you need not write so much. You only have to write xenogamy as the answer. Why xenogamy? Because it is only in xenogamy you will get genetically different types of species. Why? Because here pollination occurs between two flowers of different plants. So, that is the reason. So, that is about the question number two. Next, moving on to question number three. State the function of filiform apparatus. So, what is this filiform apparatus? It is present in the female ovule that is there. There, there is a small finger-like projection that is present in the synergid region wherein the filiform apparatus is present. So, what is the function of the filiform apparatus? Its function is to guide the pollen tubes entry. So much if you write it is enough. No need of writing, describing the filiform apparatus and all that. Just write its function, guiding the pollen tube. So here fourth one, give an example for non-medicated IUD. Here any one example if you give, it is enough. Non-medicated IUD. So one is progesterone IUD and the other one is the levonogestrel IUD. So these are 
non-medicated IUDs. Why they are non-medicated? They are the IUDs that actually secrete hormones inside the female reproductive system. So, that is why. So, any one if you write it is enough here. So, next question with reference to Mendelian laws of inheritance state the meaning of dominance. So, what is the meaning of dominance according to Mendelian law? What is dominance? Mendel talked about two things right in genetics one is recessive character and one is dominance character. So, here they have asked about dominance. So, what most of you might do you will not read the question paper properly you might write the law of inheritance but here read the question properly. They have not asked you to write the law of inheritance. They have asked you to state the meaning of dominance. They know the law of inheritance. In the law of inheritance the word dominance comes. You need to make them understand what is that word dominance there. What is the meaning of that? So, that is why I am telling you read the question paper very very carefully. What most of you will do? You will just with reference to the Mendelian law of inheritance. You will just read till here. Okay, they have asked for Mendelian law of inheritance. You will just write the Mendelian law of inheritance. You will forget even reading about the other half. So, that is why I want you to read the question completely 2 to 3 times, 4 to 5 times if possible. What they have asked here, state the meaning of dominance in this particular case. So, Mendel's law of dominance states that in a heterozygote, so in a heterozygote means say for example here TT. If I am saying TT, the dominant allele will be expressed. So, that is the meaning, right? So, no need of writing so much. For you to understand, I have given so such a big answer here because you need to read and understand what exactly it is. You can just write according to Mendelian law of inheritance, the meaning of dominance means in a heterozygote plant, dominant allele will be expressed. So, what you need to write in a heterozygote dominant allele will be expressed exclusively. That is true, right? Out of this, this is the dominant one, this is the recessive one. So, which will get expressed? The dominant one will get expressed. The plant will be tall here. So, that is the reason here. So, please read the questions properly. So, next moving on, which autosome link disorder is associated with the reduced rate of synthesis of one of the globin chains of hemoglobin? So, here, which autosome linked disorder? It is an autosome linked disorder which is associated with the reduced rate of synthesis. So, in hemoglobin, there is a the chains of hemoglobin that are there in that there is a reduced rate of synthesis of one of the chains of hemoglobin. So, that will actually lead to a disorder called as thallus mias. So, thallus mias is answer here. So, thallus mias it is a genetic disorder. In hemoglobin we have the alpha and the beta chains right. So, if either the alpha or the beta chain production in hemoglobin gets reduced completely then it will lead to thalassemia. So, no need of writing so much. If you write thalassemia, it's, it's enough here. So, what is the answer for this thalassemia? And here, question number 7. Here also, read the question very, very carefully. Name the pyrimidin present both in RNA and DNA. So, here we know that the pyrimidins that are present are thymine, cytosine and Uracil. Again here what most of you will do, you will just read half. Name the pyrimidin present in RNA. You will read off like that and you will write it as uracil. Because uracil is there in RNA, it is not there in DNA. So that is why I am telling you read the question very very carefully again here. Name the pyrimidin present both in RNA and DNA. So, which is the pyramid? You can't take uracil here because uracil is there in RNA, it is not there in DNA. But uh, thymine, thymine is there in DNA. In RNA, thymine is not there. So, what is left? Cytosine. So, cytosine is the answer. So, that is why read the question carefully. Three to five times, please read the question. Understand the question because I know that most of you, the kids so nowadays, the main mistake that they do is they don't have patience in reading something and understanding it. So that is why read it very, very carefully, and that is the reason why you lose marks because you no, don't have patience to read the questions very carefully. So that is the reason. 
So next moving on to the next one here patients who have undergone surgery are treated with a very effective sedative and painkiller. They have given a statement here a sedative and a painkiller is used to treat a patient. What is the name of it? So that sedative and painkiller is nothing but morphine. It comes in human health and diseases. This is a question from human health and diseases. So morphine is such drug. It is used both as a sedative as well as a painkiller. Of course, as a painkiller, many other drugs are there. But here you have to be careful. They have also mentioned sedative. So that is why morphine is the answer here. Next is mother's milk is considered very essential for newborn infant. If so, how it provides immunity? So here also a statement. Mother's milk is considered important for the infant. But why is it considered important? You have to write about it. Because during the first few days after delivery, the child will not uh, have any immune cells. But that the breast produces colostrum, which is rich in protein and antibodies that provide immunity. So that is why. So because the children, that is the newborn babies, will not be able to have immunity. They don't have immunity by themselves. So that is why the colostrum that is produced by the mother will actually contain a lot of proteins and antibodies that will provide them immunity. So that is the reason. You need to write the reason. So mention the role of azospirillum as biofertilizer. So azospirillum, what is its role as a biofertilizer? So it secretes some fungicides and also some enzymes in minute amount and therefore it increases the crop production in large scale. So that is why it is used as a biofertilizer. So don't write here it is used as a biofertilizer because it produces crops in a large scale. That will not help you need to mention why exactly it is used. Why exactly is it capable of producing crops on a large scale or high yielding? Why is it? It is because it secretes some fungicides and enzymes that will prevent the diseases in plants and the enzymes will increase the yield in that particular plant. So therefore crop productivity will increase. Your crop improvement will occur. So that is why it is used as a biofertilizer. So next question, how do statins function in a body as bioactive blood cholesterol lowering agent? So here they have told us statin is a bioactive blood cholesterol lowering agent. They have mentioned what is our duty now? They have asked how do statins function? How do they lower the cholesterol? That is what we need to write here. So statins lower LDL levels by inhibiting. So what do they do? They inhibit HMG-CoA reductase activity which is an enzyme. So that enzyme activity they will reduce. When that enzyme activity reduces, automatically the cholesterol level in the body also reduces. So what you need to concentrate on, statins actually lowers the cholesterol in a body by inhibiting the HMG-CoA reductase activity in a body. So that is the answer that you need to write here. Moving on to the next one which is the source of agarose used as a matrix in gel electrophoresis. So in gel electrophoresis for separating DNA we use a gel right the gel like substance that is there. What is that? From where is it got? That is what this question means. So it is got from agarose. Of course, it is agarose. It is agarose. But from where is the agarose got? Because here they have already mentioned it as agarose. So they have mentioned that in that gel, agarose will be added. What is your work now? You need to write from where is that agarose got. So the agarose is actually extracted from seaweeds. So if you write, it is extracted from seaweeds. That is also enough. So much is enough. So moving on to the next one. Give an example for the technique used in molecular diagnosis based on the principle of antigen-antibody interaction. So, you need to study antigen-antibody interaction. For that, which tool do you use? So, that tool is nothing but ELISA test. So, it is enzyme-linked immunoassay test, ELISA test. So, enzyme-linked immunoassay test actually lets us know the interaction between the antigen and antibody. Therefore, telling us how severe the disease is, whether the disease is present or not or all about that. So, that is why you need to mention the name of the technique here. Next, India has more than 1000 varieties of mango. They have given a statement. So, which level of diversity does this represent? So, there are different levels of diversity, right? Genetic diversity, species diversity. We have studied that in biodiversity chapter. So, more than 1000 varieties of mangoes is present means it is genetic diversity. 
Of course, it is genetic diversity because variation in the genes. Why? Some of the hybrids have been provided, some of the uh, have been made, some of the genetically modified mangoes have been made. So, all that work related to the genes. So, genetic diversity is genetic diversity. Next one, define endemism. So, the ecological, what is endemism? Here, don't write your own sentence. Definition cannot be put in your own sentence. Def definition, somebody would have defined it. You need to put it as such. So, be careful here. So, the ecological states of species that are native and defined to a particular geographical location is called as endemism. So, what is endemism? For you to understand, endemism means Say for example, in India, Sundarban is endemic to tiger. Means tiger is found only in Sundarban and nowhere else in the world or uh, nowhere else in India. So that is what is meant by endemism. So that you need to put it in the definition form. Exact words you need to write here. So this was about part A wherein one mark questions. This is how you need to answer it. So next moving on to part B. Here three to five sentences or you can write three to four points here so that it will fetch you marks. So first question, name the vegetative propagules in potato and water hyacinth. I had told you they have divided the question as one mark and one mark. So here this is a two mark question. Entirely you get two marks in part B. So here potato it is either you can write it as isotuber then water hyacinth you can write it as offset. So if you forget about writing what about water hyacinth and you write only potato you will get one mark. Only if you write both the things, you'll get two marks here. Next question, differentiate between Singami and Triple Fusion. So, this is a two mark question. So, always please write at least two differences under each of these because it is a two mark question. Why? Because they would have divided it as half mark here, half here, half for this, half for this. So, that is why at least two, two points under each you need to write. So, you need to differentiate between the so, next moving on to the next question, GnRH and LH, these are two hormones. So, they are absolutely necessary for the process of spermatogenesis. Justify this by giving one reason. So, the word here spermatogenesis has come. So, when we know spermatogenesis means formation of sperms. In which body sperms will be formed? In the male body, right? Females, it is nothing to do with females. So, we are talking about Two hormones here that are produced in the male body which are responsible for spermatogenesis. What are the two hormones? They are GnRH and LH. So now we need to justify how exactly do this GnRH and LH help in spermatogenesis. We need to give reasons. So this is a two mark question. If you can see here, I have written two points, right? So two points have been written for two marks. So GnRH, you need to write about GnRH and you need to write about LH. Each of the function, one on function, one on role uh, in spermatogenesis, you write it is sufficient here. So, what does GnRH do? GnRH actually, it is a gonadotropin hormone that is there that actually stimulates the production of follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Therefore, which will act on the testis to help in spermatogenesis. Next is luteinizing hormone. How do luteinizing hormone help in spermatogenesis? Luteinizing hormone acts on the Leydig cells that are present in the testes, right? So, those Leydig cells and will stimulate the Leydig cells to secrete the male reproductive hormone that is androgen and this androgen stimulates spermatogenesis. So, two you need to write, one for GnRH and one for LH. This will fetch you two marks. So, next moving on to question number 19. Give an example for co-dominant. So, again here also they have split it into one mark and one mark. So, give an example for co-dominant phenotype and animal with exotypes of sex determination. So, here co-dominant phenotype. What is an example? ABO blood group is a co-dominant phenotype right here because both the alleles get expressed in this particular case. So, that is why that is A and allele B. So, example is ABO blood group. So, next one example. Give an example for animal with XO type of sex determination. XO type of sex determination means here, exotype of sex determination, 
One example is grasshoppers usually exhibit exotype of sex determination. Here there is no need for you to write all this. For you to understand how, why grasshopper is the example there, I have given this sentence. But for you there is no need for you to write this in the exam. Here also, this one also there is no need. No need of writing. Why? Because they have just asked you to give an example. Why is ABO blood group an example for co-dominant? Why is grasshopper an example for uh, exotype of sex determination? You need to understand the reason. That is why I have given complete answer here. But for you, if you write only the example, it is enough. So for co-dominant example is ABO blood group. For animal with exotype of sex determination, example is grasshopper. So, why is grasshopper an example here? Because males exhibit only one X chromosome. Because we all know that in males, what are the chromosomes that are present? XY and in females, it is XX, right? But here, what happens? It is only in grasshopper that only one X chromosome gets expressed. Whereas, in the case of uh, grasshopper itself, both the XX chromosomes also get expressed. Here, Y chromosomes will not get expressed. So, therefore, the progenies will have a exo condition here. So, that is the reason. So, what should have been in the place of O here? Y. But Y is not getting expressed. So, that is why it is an exo type of sex determination. So, therefore, grasshopper is one such example okay moving on to next give reasons for the occurrence of polyploidy and turner's syndrome so we need to give the reason why does polyploidy occur why does turner's syndrome occur so we shall look into the answer so here also it is one mark it is one mark so first talking about polyploidy what is polyploidy of course we have a many number of chromosomes so polyploidy it occurs due to the loss of chromosome and also due to addition of chromosome. So, under polyploidy, there are two types. One is hypopolyploidy and the other one is hyperpolyploidy. So, if you don't mention hyper and hypo also, it is fine. But you need to write it as polyploidy. What is the reason? Why does polyploidy occur? Polyploidy occurs either due to the addition of a chromosome or due to the deletion of a chromosome. So, if deletion of chromosome occurs in the case of humans, we will have how many? 45, right? If addition occurs, we will have 47. So, like that. That is nothing but polyploidy. So, here next is Turner syndrome. Why does Turner syndrome occur? We need to give the reason. So, Turner syndrome, it is actually a female specific genetic condition. Why does it occur? It occurs because of either a partial or total deletion of one of the X chromosome. So, in females, the autosomal chromosomes that are there, the XX chromosomes, any one of the chromosome, either complete deletion of the chromosome may occur or partial deletion of the chromosome may occur. So, that is why it occurs, Turner's syndrome. So, you need to mention the reason, exact reason for this. Here, don't write the symptom. We are not supposed to write the symptom. What are we supposed to write? We are supposed to write why exactly does this disease occur. It occurs because of the chromosome here. So, what happens to the chromosome that you need to write in this particular case. Next, moving on to the next question. So, evolution can also occur by anthropogenic action. Substantiate the statement by giving two examples. So, here... You substantiate the statement, you give reason, you will get one mark. You give two examples, one mark. So, reason will fetch you one mark. You write two examples. These two examples will carry half mark each. If you write only one example, you will get only half mark. If you write two examples, you will get half mark each. Therefore, it will equal to one mark. So, therefore, two marks you will get here. So, evolution can also occur by anthropogenic action. Substantiate the statement by giving two examples. So, two examples of evolution by anthropogenic actions are one is industrial melanism. So, what are occurred in industrial melanism? That is the peppered moth. We had studied about that. So, that is the example and overuse of weedicide and pesticide. That also causes a loss in the biodiversity or in the species diversity. So, these two are the anthropogenic. So, always remember anthropology. Anthropology means study of human beings. So, here when the word comes anthropogenic effect, it means some effect related to humans because of our interference something is happening to the biodiversity. 
what was first interference first was because of over industrialization these um, industrial melanism occurred in the uh, butterflies or the moth and second one was overuse of weedicide and pesticides in the agriculture so this is about anthropogenic so that is why in biology please split the words understand the meaning of the words and study then only you can understand very well so moving on to the next question list any two physiological barriers of innate immunity what are the physiological barriers two physiological barriers you need to mention so this also you can write it in the form of points so two physiological barriers that provide innate immunity will carry one one mark each that is how you get two marks so first one is skin so if you write skin it is not enough skin which prevents entry of microorganisms and the second one is mucus mucus which lines the epithelium lining of the gastrointestinal tract the esophagus so all that or the respiratory tract so all that help in trapping microorganisms and all that are entering into the body so these two are the barriers that actually provides us innate immunity they are barriers right they act like shields say for example we have skin so our skin that is there it was the first barrier that prevents entry of microorganisms into our body then uh, in our nose also we have mucus we have hair cells and in our esophagus also there is mucus in a gastrointestinal tract in a respiratory tract also there is mucus all those mucus they are the ones that actually trap the microbes therefore preventing them from entering into our body so that is the reason you need to write about it so two you need to write which is the first one skin which prevents the entry of microorganisms into the body second one is mucus which lines the epithelium of the respiratory tract the gastrointestinal tract preventing the entry of microorganisms so to, these two you write you'll get two marks next moving on to the next question even though inbreeding is disadvantageous in agriculture true right inbreeding is disadvantageous in agriculture why you'll not get variety so that is why inbreeding is nothing but self pollination breeding between the same species what might happen the yield of that particular breed or something will reduce drastically the quality of the breed will reduce drastically so it is a disadvantage actually but in spite of it being a disadvantage it is still very important why is it important in spite of being disadvantages we have to justify how many reasons should we give here they themselves have mentioned in the question two reasons sometimes they will not mention it as two reasons they'll just mention it as justify this by giving reasons it is your intelligence wherein at that time you should decide this is for two marks so i have to write two reasons without them asking also you are supposed to write two reasons or two points there so here in breeding increases homozygosity and uh, it is necessary for producing a pure line so that is why to maintain the pure line or uh, we say to maintain the same characters of the parent if you want in the progeny then inbreeding is very very important that is why in biology you need not write exactly like this i told you they here they have uh, wrote it as it is necessary for maintaining pure line but i put it in different word what did i say it is necessary for maintaining the same characters in the progeny that are there in the parents that way also you can write it and next point i have written here is it helps in the accumulation of superior genes that is true right when you are only going for breeding between the species you can only select the superior genes and you can breed between that species then the same species itself so therefore you can eliminate the desirable genes so these are the two points here each reason will carry one mark each here so mention one method for the introduction of recombinant dna into here also if you mention the method for the introduction of recombinant dna into animal cell you will get one mark and if you mention the method for introduction of recombinant dna into plant cell you will get one mark what you need to write here don't write about anything long long answer only what is the method used here what is the tool used here you need to write so what is recombinant dna technology from outside you are introducing via a plasmid you are introducing the dna into the host right be it a animal cell or a plant cell now if it is a animal cell how you can introduce the plasmid into it we'll look into so here animal cell means one is electrophoresis then we have micro injection then we have biolistic or gene gun method that is electrophoresis technique wherein electric currents will pass which will agitate the cell and therefore it will allow the entry of the 
recombinant DNA. So that is how it is done. Micro injection is through a needle, it will be injected into. Biolistic or gene gun method, this is also like a, how a bullet is shot just like that with great force. The recombinant DNA, it will be shot into it via a plasmid and that will enter into. So that is how it is done. Next talking about plant cell. Any one if you write also, it's enough here. Next plant cell. Plant cell mainly by using a vector here that is agrobacterium tumefaciens. It is transferred or it is transferred via any of the plant viruses. So that is how it is transferred in this particular case. So this is about the question number 24. So one one method you write here, it will fetch you two marks. So next one. State how does ex situ conservation help in protecting biodiversity? There are two types of conservation here. Don't get confused. Again, read the question properly. They have asked about ex situ conservation. There are two types of conservation. One is in situ conservation and the other one is ex situ conservation. So in situ conservation means, say for example, you have a national park. In that national park itself, you will make an area, in that natural habitat itself, you will make an area wherein in that area itself, the animal will be protected in the natural habitat. That is in situ conservation. What is ex situ conservation? So that is why understanding the meaning of the terms is very, very important. If you need to write this answer, you first need to understand what is in situ and what is ex situ. So what is ex situ? Ex situ means you are bringing the animal from somewhere into a different habitat. So that is ex situ. So state how does ex situ conservation help in protecting biodiversity? So threatened animals and plants are taken out from their natural habitat and placed in special settings like maybe in a... Uh, botanical gardens, in uh, zoological parks, in uh, all those places or in breeding centers, there they are placed and they are given special care, their fertility is maintained, their reproductive health is maintained, everything is done here. So, so much you write, it will give you one mark and write an example, example zoological park, botanical garden or here itself you can mention it as placed in special settings such as zoological parks or botanical gardens where they can be protected and given special care. So, this is about part B. So, this is how you need to answer the questions very very carefully in part A and part B of this particular session. So, with this we will end this particular session and in the coming session that is session 2 we shall discuss how you need to write the answers for part C carrying 3 marks and part D which consists of section 1 and section 2 carrying 5 marks each. So, we will learn about that in the coming session. So, we shall meet again in the coming session. Thank you.